there. Welcome to Max's Cards and Dice Dugout. This is episode 144. And this time out, we are at Dover Downs International Speedway for race number 23 of the 1991 Stock Car Project. We're using Downey Games Fast Action Racing. And this race uh, was the peak antifreeze 500. So before we get to business, let's take a look at the standings coming into this race. It's still Davy Allison and Bobby Hamilton, first and second. However, Allison, with that dramatic late race passing of Dale Earnhardt at Richmond, race 22, he pulls off the victory and has increased his lead from 13 to 39. So he has tripled that lead as we come into race 23. Right behind him in third place is Ernie Irvin, 40 points back. The rest of the top 10. Fourth, Rusty Wallace. Fifth, Sterling Marlin. Sixth, Dale Earnhardt. We've been keeping an eye on him simply because he was the real-life uh, cup winner in 91. Seventh, Alan Kowicki. Eighth, Michael Waltrip. Ninth, Harry Gann. Tenth, Ricky Rudd. All right, so let's take a look at the track. Uh, Dover is a one-mile oval. Uh, perfectly symmetrical oval. And here at Dover... Uh, contact has uh, no change, so it is an average track for contact to occur, and that's compared to the other tracks on the circuit uh, this year. And mechanical gets a plus one, so there is a slightly less chance of a mechanical issue happening to a driver, but it's still a possibility. Okay, as I mentioned, this is the Peak Antifreeze 500. This race took place on September 15th, 1991 was the 23rd race of the 1991 stock car season. And on that day in 91, Alan Kowicki won the pole with Harry Gant getting the checkered flag. All right, so let's get the clipboard out of the way. I'll be doing uh, the recording off camera. Slows me down a little bit, so you'll have to excuse me for that. So the first thing we do is give the cards a good shuffle and a cut and we'll set the field for this race. I always mention this grid is not a representation of position on the track. It is an abstracted view of different actions and occurrences during a race and the drivers involved in those incidents or actions. All right. So, seven races to go. Can Davy Allison hold on to his lead? We shall see shortly. All right. We got Morgan Shepard. Darrell Waltrip. Lake Speed. Richard Petty. I set the cards out like this uh, just, to get, just to get a little bit more randomization. Uh, Jimmy Spencer. Rick Mast, Joe Rootman, Bobby Hillen Jr., Dale Jarrett, Kyle Petty, Dale Earnhardt, Mickey Gibbs, Jimmy Means, Rick Wilson, Terry Labonte, Bill Elliott, Ken Schrader, Jeff Bodine, points leader, Davey Allison. Sterling Marlin, Rusty Wallace, Ted Musgrave, Derek Cope, Hut Strickland, excuse me, Strickland and Jimmy Spencer are getting tangled up before the race here. All right, Alan Kowicki. Stanley Smith, Brett Bodine, Larry Pearson, Bobby Hamilton. Cards giving me trouble today. Ricky Rudd, Dave Marcus, Chad Little, Harry Gant, Mark Martin, Michael Waltrip, last but not least, Ernie Irvin. All right, so first thing, we will determine the pole sitter, and we're going to be looking at the number 
in this box here, we'll use Brett Bodine as an example, 54. And we're going to read the white die first. So that'd be 26. So we'll be looking for a 26 here. And that's going to be Mark Martin. Down here in the lower right corner. Hope it's all on screen. Yes, it looks like it is. All right, so Mark Martin gets the pole here at Dover. And he's immediately going to face the challenge. And that challenge will be coming from 44, Dale Earnhardt. Okay, so for this first challenge and this first challenge only, the pole sitter gets a plus one. So that makes Martin a 12, Earnhardt's an 11, challenge is at a minus one. Earnhardt needs an eight to 12 to take the lead. He rolls a four and fails, and Mark Martin is the race leader here early on. That's a fail, and Mark Martin. Okay, first phase is a mechanical check. Going to select a random driver for Jason. It can include the leader. And remember here at Dover, uh, mechanical issues get a plus one. So this is going to be a 26 Rick Mast. His 12 o'clock wraps around down to Ted Musgrave. His 3 o'clock is Brett Bodine. Six o'clock is Hut Strickland. And his nine o'clock is Rusty Wallace. Okay, so we're going to be looking at the uh, red mechanical issue avoidance number. That's what I call it anyway. And we want to, uh, the driver needs to roll um, less than his number. If he rolls equal to it, he's forced to uh, come behind the wall, be out for a while, you know, come back out. He'll get a red lap marker. He's down several laps. If he rolls higher than his number, his mechanical issue is going to force him to retire. Okay, so first is Rick Mast. He's a 7. Here at Dover, he's an 8. He needs a 7 or less. He rolls a 9, and Rick Mast, unfortunately, is out of the race early on. Mass fail, DNF. Okay, Ted Musgrave. Musgrave's an eight. He becomes a nine. He needs an eight or less. He rolls a five and passes. Next, Brett Bodine. Brett Bodine has an X. That means he automatically fails and has to leave the race. He has an X in his red box for mechanical issues. So Bodine fails and... He's also DNF. Next is Hutch Strickland. He's an 8. Makes him a 9. He needs an 8 or less. He rolls a 7. Passes. And uh, last is Rusty Wallace. Wallace is a 6. Here at Dover, he becomes a 7. He needs a 6 or less. Gets that 6. And passes. So, since Mark Martin was not involved in that, he remains the race leader. Okay, and leaving phase one into phase two, he's going to face a challenge. And that challenge is coming from 15, Lake Speed. Okay, Martin's an 11, Speed is a 6. Makes him a minus 5, that means he automatically fails, but remains on the lead lap. So, that's a fail. And Mark Martin remains the race leader. Now we're going to have a phase of green flag racing. We're going to select a random driver for Jasons. And they're going to go up against the leader looking at the green race rating and using the quality pass matrix. Okay, so a random driver is 13. Daryl Walter. Okay. 
Sterling Marlin is his 12 o'clock. Derek Cope is his three. Davey Allison is his six. And his nine o'clock whips all the way around to his brother, Michael. Okay, but first up is Daryl Waltrip. He's an 11. Mark Martin's an 11. Challenge is at a zero. Daryl Waltrip needs a seven to 12. He rolls a five, fails. Mark Martin remains the leader. Next is Sterling Marlin. He and Martin are also both 11, so this challenge is the same. Marlin needs a seven to 12. Rolls that seven, and Sterling Marlin becomes the new race leader. All right, Derek Cope is the next driver. Derek Cope, where is Derek Cope? Derek Cope is a seven, Marlin is an 11. His challenge is at a minus four. Cope needs an 11 or 12 to be successful. And he rolls a three and fails. Sterling Marlin remains the race leader. Next is Davey Allison. He and Marlin are both 11s. Allen's, Allison is challenging at a zero, needs a seven to 12. Rolls that seven and takes the lead. Pass. Allison is a race leader and he's going to face a challenge from Michael Waltrip, who's also an 11. So it's another challenge at zero. Michael Waltrip needs a seven to 12. Rolls a six and fails. And Davey Allison remains the race leader. Okay, next phase, phase three. Going to be green flag pit stops followed by a check for penalties on pit row. So, we use a random driver for Jason. So, we're going to go up against leader Davey Allison, except this time we're going to look at the blue pit crew rating and use the quality pass matrix. So, this challenge is coming from 42 Kyle Petty. Now remember, these are pit stops during green flag racing. Okay, Kyle Petty's 12 o'clock. It's Bobby Hamilton. His 3 o'clock is Dave Marcus. His 6 o'clock is Larry Pearson. And his 9 o'clock is Alan Kowicki. Okay, so Allison's an eight. Kyle Petty is a 10. So this challenge is at a plus two. Petty needs a five to 12. He rolls a nine and Kyle Petty is now the race leader. That's a pass, Kyle Petty in the lead. Okay, Bobby Hamilton is an eight. Kyle Petty's a 10. Hamilton's challenge is at a minus two. He needs a nine to 12. He rolls a four and fails. Dave, uh, Kyle Petty remains the race leader. Dave Marcus, he's a seven. Petty's a 10. This challenge is at a minus three. Marcus needs a 10 to 12. He rolls a three and fails. Kyle Petty remains the leader. Larry Pearson is a four. Kyle Petty is a 10. That's a minus six. That's an automatic failure. And Larry Pearson was not trying to, he was trying to stay on the lead lap during these pit stops and was unsuccessful. So he gets a green lap marker. There's a fail and a green. And Kyle Petty remains the race leader. Final, cha final challenge comes from Alan Kowicki, who's an eight, going up against Kyle Petty's 10. It's a minus two. Kowicki needs a nine to 12. Rolls a seven and fails. And after the green flag pit stops, Kyle Petty remains the race leader. Okay, next phase. Second part of phase three is to check for pit row uh, infractions and penalties. Uh, we're gonna do a random driver 
for Jason's. We're going to look at the pit crew rating. And you got to be equal to or lower the pit crew rating. If you're higher, you get a green lap marker because you've had some infraction, had to come in for a stop, stop and go. And you go down a lap. Any yellow or red lap drivers would automatically be black flagged. And in this case, right now, we only have one lap driver, and that's Larry Pearson. So let's see where this is coming from. We get a 15, it's Lake Speed. Okay, his 12 o'clock is Rusty Wallace. Three o'clock, that's Strickland. Six o'clock, Sterling Marlin. And his nine o'clock wraps around to Ernie Irvin. All right, so we're looking at the blue pit crew rating. And the first one we're going to check is Lake Speed, who has a six. So he needs a six or less to be successful. He rolls an 11, and he got into some trouble on pit row at some point in this race. Forced to come in for a stop and go, and he goes a lap down. So that's a fail. Green lap marker. Rusty Wallace is an eight. He needs an eight or less. He rolls a nine, and... Same situation for Rusty Wallace. That's going to hurt him in the standings. Failed. Green lap marker. Hutch Strickland, also an 8. Needs an 8 or less. He rolls an 11 and fails. And he's forced to come in. First stop and go. And he's down a lap. So fail. Green lap marker. Sterling Marlin is an, also an 8. Needs an 8 or less. He rolls a 6. He didn't get in trouble. So that's a pass. Last will be Ernie Irvin, who's another 8. 8 or less. He rolls a 5, and he's also good. All right, so we had three drivers fail those, and three drivers were forced to come in for a stop and go. And after all of that, Kyle Petty remains the race leader. And as we head into Phase 4, contact... We're going to have consecutive challenges here. All right, so the first challenge to Kyle Petty is coming from 32, Alan Kowicki. All right, they're both 11s, so Kowicki's challenging at a zero. He needs a 7 to 12. Rolls a 6 and fails. Kyle Petty remains the race leader. All right, next challenge. Kyle Petty will face this, and it's going to be coming from 22. His old man, King Richard. All right, Richard Petty is an 8. Kyle is an 11. So he's challenging at a minus 3. He needs a 10 to 12. Rolls a 6 and fails. And his son, Kyle, remains the race leader. Okay. Now we're going to check for any contact. Random driver for adjacent. And then we'll discuss how this works. All right. So the random driver is 54, Chad Little. All right. His 12 o'clock is Terry Labonte. His 3 o'clock is Ken Schrader. Six o'clock is Rick Wilson. And his nine o'clock is Dale Earnhardt. All right, so we're looking at the yellow contact avoidance number. Here at Dover, there's no change to that. So we're going by the number that's on the driver card. You need to be lower than that to uh, not have a contact issue. If you roll your contact number, you've had some sort of issue, had to come behind the wall, and you're going to get a yellow lap marker, which means you're down several laps. And if you roll higher than your contact number, you're forced to retire. All right, so first is Chad Little. And Chad Little's an 8. So he needs a 7 or less. He rolls a 6. He's 
safe. So he passes. Terry Labonte is a nine. So he needs an eight or less. He rolls a seven and he passes. Uh, Ken Schrader is also, oh, he's an eight. So he needs a seven or less. He rolls that seven. So far, so good. No contact here at Dover. Rick Wilson is up next. He's a seven, so he needs a six or less. He rolls an 11, and he runs into the wall. Maybe. We'll have to see what happens with Dale Earnhardt. But he's forced to retire, so that's a fail and a DNF for Rick Wilson. And the last check is Dale Earnhardt. He's an 11. He needs a 10 or less to be safe. Rolls a five, and he's good. Pass. So after all that, Kyle Petty remains the race leader. All right, so since we did have some contact, we're going to have pit stop, excuse me, pit stop, pit stops under caution. And they work essentially the same as the green flag pit stops. Um, going to select a random driver for Jason, and they're going to go up against the race leader looking at the blue pit crew rating. And that's going to be 25, and that's Hut Strickland. Hut Strickland is going to be trying to get his lap back. So that's Strickland. Uh, Strickland's 12 o'clock comes down, to, wraps around and comes down to Ted Musgrave. Um, his uh, 3 o'clock, it's Dale Jarrett. Is six o'clock is Jimmy Spencer, and his nine o'clock is Lake Speed, who is also going to be trying to get his lap back. So I guess they're taking a chance, staying out. Uh, I don't know, but they're all going to be going up against Kyle Petty, at least for now, and we're going to be looking at the blue pit crew rating. So first is Hutch Strickland. Strickland's an eight. Petty's a 10. Strickland's challenging at a minus two. He needs a nine to 12. He fails, doesn't get his lap back. He fails. And Kyle Petty remains the race leader. Or excuse me, I'm doing this wrong. What, 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 what? We gotta stop this here. It's the race leader for adjacent and one random, so this is completely wrong. All right, so forget about Hutch Strickland. I apologize, so it's the race leader, Kyle Petty. It's the, it's the four adjacent and one random, so we just gotta select the one random, and that's gonna be 21, and that's gonna be Ted Musgrave. All right, so uh, it's Bobby Hamilton is the first guy. He's 12 o'clock, Dave Marcus. Is it three? I apologize for this. Uh, Larry Pearson trying to get his lap back is at six. And Alan Kowicki is at nine. And as we said, the random is Ted Musgrave. Okay, so they're going to be going up against Kyle Petty. I just selected the wrong driver, so... At this point in the race, we're looking at the leader and his adjacent plus one random. All right, so the first one is Bobby Hamilton. Hamilton is an eight on his pit crew rating. Kyle Petty is a 10. And uh, so that's a minus two. He needs a nine to 12. He rolls a 10 and Bobby Hamilton takes the lead. It's a pass. He's the leader right now. Remember, this is during pit stops. Now it's uh, Dave Marcus. Marcus is a seven. Hamilton's an eight. Challenge is at a minus one. Marcus needs an eight to 12. He rolls that eight, and now he has the lead as these pit stops continue. So that's a pass. Next is Larry Pearson. He's a four. Marcus is a seven. This is at a minus three. Pearson needs a 10 to 12 to get that lap back, and he doesn't do it. So he remains a lap down on the fail. Jimmy Spencer is a seven. Marcus is a seven. The challenge is at a zero. Spencer needs a seven to 12. 
He does not get it. Fails. Dave Marcus remains the race leader. And the last check is Ted Musgrave. He's an 8. Marcus is a 7. Challenge is at a plus 1. He needs a 6 to 12. And he rolls Snake Eyes. And we have a new race leader in Dave Marcus. Comes out of those pit stops. Still in the lead. Okay. So he's now going to face a challenge as we head into the closing lap laps action. And that challenge is coming from 64, Ken Schrader. All right, Schrader's an 11, Marcus is a six. That's a minus five. That is an automatic failure. Marcus does remain on the lead lap, but Ken Schrader is the new leader. Ken Schrader, who has three wins already this season. Hope I didn't jinx him there. All right, so Ken Schrader is the new leader. Now we're going into the closing phase, the closing lap action, and uh, these checks are all going to involve the leader. So we're going to see if there's a mechanical check here. And here at Dover, that's going to happen on a roll of a 7 to 12. And we roll that 7, so that's a yes. So that means Ken Schrader, we're going to be looking at his number 8 for his mechanical uh, rating. But he gets a plus 1, so he becomes a 9. And so he needs uh, an 8 or less. And he gets that 8. So Schrader passes and remains the race leader and is going to face another challenge. And that challenge is coming from 65, Ernie Earp, his neighbor. All right, so they're both 11s, Schrader and Irvin. So Irvin's challenging at a zero, needs a seven to 12. Rolls an eight, and we have a new race leader in Ernie Irvin. That's a pass, Irvin. Is the race leader. Now, we're going to check contact. And here, contact will happen at, here at Dover. It will happen in this late race phase or last highlight event. Um, contact will happen on an 8 to 12. We roll a 7, so that's a no. And Ernie Irvin remains the race leader. All right, so uh, since there was no contact, there's no pit stops under caution, so we are waived through that phase, and we still have Ernie Irvin as a leader, and he's going to face a challenge. We're down here. We're getting near the end. All right, and this challenge to Irvin is coming from 44, Dale Earnhardt. All right, uh, they're both 11s. So Earnhardt is challenging at a zero. He needs a seven to 12. He rolls a nine and we have a new race leader in Dale Earnhardt. So that's a pass and it's Earnhardt in the lead as this race is winding down. Okay, now we're going to see uh, if there's any pit stops. Well, nope. I, I apologize for that. No pit stops under caution have taken place, so that section is void. Dale Earnhardt remains the race leader. Now we're going to check for a late race phase of green flag racing, and that'll happen here at Dover on a 6 to 12. And we rolled Snake Eyes, so that's a no. All right, so that phase is NA, and we are down to the nitty gritty here. And it's a final challenge for Dale Earnhardt. Now the way this works is we look at his adjacent drivers and we use the rules of priority. So Ricky Rudd's at 12 o'clock, he's an 11. Chad Little's at three o'clock, he's an eight. Bobby Hamilton's at six, he's a 10. Stanley Smith's at nine, he's a two. Ricky Rudd at 12 with the 11 is going to present the final challenge. So it's Ricky Rudd. 
So we're down to the end of the race, and it's Rudd and Earnhardt going back and, back and forth. Earnhardt was in this position our last race with Davey Allison, and Davey Allison overcame him, got the checkered flag. Let's see what happens this time. So Rudd and Earnhardt are both 11s. Can't get any evener than this. Their challenge is at a zero. Rudd needs a seven to 12. He rolls a four, and Dale Earnhardt holds off Ricky Rudd here in the late phases of the race and wins the Peak Antifreeze 500 at Dover Downs International Speedway. All right, so that's going to shake the points up a little bit. Earnhardt making a late charge this season, kind of in the middle of the pack most of the time. But uh, comes through in this one. Okay, so I'm going to move this away for a second. Of course, Dale Earnhardt's a winner. I'm going to put this back here to mark his spot. Dale Earnhardt's the winner. Ricky Rudd finishes second. All right, because he, he lost that final challenge. All right, so we need to look at the rest of the drivers who were eligible for this and remove them based on rules of priority. So Bobby Hamilton, he needed this top five finish. He finishes third. Chad Little with the eight finishes fourth. And how about Stanley Smith finishes in the top five? I don't think this is the first time he's been in the top five. Okay, so we'll put this marker back for Dale Earnhardt for his position. Okay, so we got our top five. Now we're going to stay in this top groove that Earnhardt was in. There's only one driver left in there, and that's Bobby Hillen Jr., so he comes off next. Okay, so now we move out to the next groove, the middle groove, and we're going to go clockwise around that middle groove, and we'll remove drivers based on their race rating. So next is Kyle Petty, Alan Kowicki, Hutt Strickland's lapped, Terry Labonte's lap. Okay, so that's the 11s. We'll go to 10s. It's Dale Jarrett. Good finish for Dale. Terry Labonte. Okay, we'll go to 9s. No 9s. 8s. Richard Petty. Pride of Berwick, PA. Jimmy Spencer. Hutt Strickland's lapped. 7s. Be Derek Cope. One of his best finishes this season. And the last driver in that groove who's not lapped is Dave Marcus. All right. So now we go straight out. Straight out to here. And we're going to go clockwise again. It's Ken Schrader, Michael Waltrip, Bill Elliott, Mark Martin, Morgan Shepard, Davey Allison, Daryl Waltrip, Sterling Marlin. They're lapped. Harry Gant, Jeff Bodine, Ernie Irvin. Okay. So remember, we're out here. Now we're looking for tens. No tens. Nines. Joe Rootman. Eights. Ted Musgrave. Mickey Gibbs. Sevens. No sevens. The only driver not lapped on the bottom groove that's left is Jimmy Means. So then we go back into Dale Earnhardt's groove. There's nobody there. We come out. And the next driver, the only one left in that groove, is Hutch Strickland. And now we go out again. And we'll remove these based on race rating. Rough finish for Rusty Wallace. Then Lake Speed. And Larry Pearson. And then we'll add the drivers who did not finish to the bottom of the stack. And here is the results for the Peak Antifreeze 500 at Dover Downs International Speedway, September 15th, 1991, in a replay. Your winner, Dale Earnhardt. Rest of the top five, Ricky Rudd, Bobby Hamilton, Chad Little, and Stanley Smith. Six to 10, Bobby Hillen Jr., Kyle Petty, Alan Kowicki, Dale Jarrett, and Terry Labonte. All right, so that's going to do it for 
uh, race 23. The next one is at Martinsville. And that'll be coming down the line as I go through my rotation. So if you hung out with me tonight, I appreciate it. Um, thank you. And I'll be back again in the near future with another video. And until then, take care.